You're listening to Men of Abundance, episode 71, with Jim Bannon. There's two quotes that I published today and I live by. Uh, The first one is Pam Hendrickson, one of my network contacts and the VP of Content Development and Program Creation with this guy named Anthony Robbins for 18 years, said, Lasting useful knowledge is gained at the intersection of just enough and overwhelm and i believe her you know every day i'm accused of hitting people with a fire hose and the other one is from a guy who's been really good to me his name is tim stewart his quote is this is beautiful until the value is understood any expense or inconvenience is too much once the value is understood no expense will stop you Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. What's up, what's up, Men of Abundance, man? It has been one hell of a week. I'm telling you, I am so far behind. I am editing this episode on a Saturday afternoon. It should have been out already on Thursday. I was actually doing pretty good. I batched quite a few episodes, well, three or four, and I pushed them out. I had them already published, and then it just caught up with me. And the week got super busy. I was supposed to have this episode edited over a week ago, actually earlier last week, and I didn't get to it, and I just didn't get to it, and then things got caught up, and here I am on a Saturday afternoon, should be sitting out on the beach doing something else, but I owe it to you guys to get these episodes out on a timely manner, and I failed you this week. I apologize for that. I really do. And I'll make it up to you for sure. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to be putting out two episodes this next week. At least two episodes are going to publish this next week. This one is going to publish then I'm going to have two more published in the next week. And I'm going to get back on track and I'm going to batch some episodes that are already recorded. And I'm telling you some amazing super amazing conversations that are truly going to change some people's lives because of these conversations. Very dynamic people I've had conversations with, and I cannot wait to get these out to you. So make sure you subscribe at menofabundance.com under any one of the podcast players. You can see where you can leave a rating and review. You can subscribe on iTunes or you can subscribe on Android or just listen to the episode right there at the website. But when you subscribe, at least that way, you'll get notified when the new episodes are posted to whatever podcast player it is that you listen to. And again, I am super stoked. I am just so excited because the membership site is coming along. The Men of Abundance Society is just about ready to launch. I know some of you are just sitting on the edge of your seats waiting for this. I am too, man. I really am, and I cannot wait to expose this thing to everybody so that you all can get in there and we can start making some changes, not just in our lives, in our personal lives, but in the lives of men around the world. Super, super exciting stuff, so stay tuned for that. The way you can make sure that you learn everything you want to know about that is to get into our private Facebook group, the Men of Abundance Community, and you can do that by clicking on the link at menofabundance.com. Click on the Members Only link. That's where I'll be updating information about the Men of Abundance Society and where you can get access to the Men of Abundance Community at Facebook. Now, our feature guest today is one unique individual. He has done business with some very well-known businessmen. I'm not going to spill the beans right here and and give a spoiler alert. Uh, I'm going to let him explain all of that to you. But I'm pretty sure that you know by now that I really like learning how people not only make money, but actually make a true living with all the various vocations, jobs, and just ways to serve the community and add value to other people. And I'm here to tell you, our feature guest today has had many different vocations, many different jobs in his life. He's got one heck of a background. And our feature guest today is bringing back QR codes. If you don't know what QR codes are, you're going to find out and you may find out a way to help you in your business if you do in fact have a business or thinking about getting a business. And one of the things that he's going to talk about is how to bring your offline market 
into your online business. I may have gotten that wrong, but we're going to talk more about that here in just a minute. Men of Abundance, I want to introduce you to Jim Bannon. Jim, welcome to Men of Abundance, man. How you doing? Oh, Wally, I am so honored to be here. I've been looking forward to this, and now the time has finally come. It has finally come. Where are you at in the world? I am in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, a place called Santan Valley, and we just got back from the International FMCA, Family Motor Coach Association Rally in Chandler. What a ball. I'll tell you what, we're going we're gonna to have a lot to talk about either on the show or offline. We've, we're all limited on our time here, but I'm a little bit familiar with Phoenix, Arizona, considering I was born and raised there and left there when I was 20. And the other thing that I like that you said right there is the motor coach. One of my, when, when or if my wife and I ever get off this rock out here in the middle of the Pacific, um, one of our dreams is to buy a motor coach and travel all over the United States. So we have a, that in common for sure great dream go chase it <laughs> yeah um, we're definitely after it that is if we ever get off this island if we ever decide to leave because there's no use in having one here that's for sure nowhere to go but um before yeah. we get too much into the show jim i really like to start out the show the way i start out pretty much every single morning which is with an attitude of gratitude what do you have to be grateful for today jim i have uh, a tremendous gratitude for cancer survival for three out of four members of my family that's that's huge. Yeah, I battled that in my family as well. Uh, unfortunately, a couple of friends have made it, but most of my family members, well, all my family members that battled with that did not win. Actually, I, I take that back. My mother did win uh, lung cancer early on, quit smoking on the spot on the day of diagnosis. Then later, um, eight years later, ended up uh, with brain cancer, and that's what ended up taken her but that's definitely a lot to be grateful for for sure because that does touch me personally so you know i talked a little bit about what you're what you have going on and we're going to get into your qr codes and everything you have going on with that which is very intriguing to me but here at men of abundance we like to get to know the man behind the greatness and the man behind the, the abundance can you tell us a little bit about yourself other than where you're from or where you're at now and kind of leading into what you got going on today well, I've, like anybody with these gray hair, I've lived a very exciting life. It's been a roller coaster. Uh, I was the youngest manager in the history of the McDonald's Corporation, so watching the Founder movie um, has really been interesting. But I grew up, um, I was in the computer business at first with Singer Business Machines, the old Frieden Calculator Company, and then uh, moved into General Electric and had a wonderful career very young guy was 30 years old put my arm around the richest man in the world and said trust me and the rest is history you might know his company called walmart and then uh, went on did a lot of other things and finally needed a job and a guy that i promoted out of east lubbock texas was a vice president of square d and when he heard i was looking he said hey come work for us so i joined square d and was part of the team that wrote a marketing plan for structured wiring in America to create data, video, audio networks in the home that didn't exist before. We were in the middle of a $4 billion merger, that's B with a billion, and uh, the European Trade Commission went thumbs down right after 9-11, and they wiped out my job. So I soon, be soon became the best-known unemployed guy in Chicago. So what was it like? Uh, what was you doing when you was sitting down and uh, talking with Sam Walton? Well, I introduced halogen headlights, and he said, what's my cost? And I told him, he said, no, no, not retail. What's my cost? <laughs> it was so out of the box, uh, but we revolutionized the industry, had the pleasure of taking, uh, we started with three out of the top 15 mass merchandisers as clients, and within six months, we had 15 of 15. And clearly, you know what halogen is today, but if those calls didn't go well, it would have been a technology that never got introduced. Right, absolutely. And one other thing, <laughs> I, I personally love this story, and I would like if you shared this story, because only because my wife and I are such big fans, I understand that you had a run-in at some point in your life, and it later on carried on later in your life somewhat uh, with Bette Midler. <laughs> yeah, the short version of the story is we got snowed in together when I was getting transferred from Cincinnati to Cleveland. My wife was nine months pregnant. 
there were only 25 guys in the bar. I heard this band that was not your normal holiday in band. I went up and I said, you know, I said, said to my friend, is that Bette Midler over there? And he goes, yeah. So I went up to her and started talking and I got the nose in the air, you know, like I'm not worthy. And uh, I said, whoa, you know, I'm really sorry that your concert at the front row got snowed out, but we've all got problems and I'm not treating people like dirt. My wife's nine months pregnant and I'm stuck here. And she said, is that true? And I said, yes. And she said, name your daughter Bet and we'll sing. <laughs> so, uh, so she did. She put on a full concert in a bar, and I was a striving professional musician, not very good. So she and I stayed up with the organ player till 3 in the morning reminiscing about how hard it was to break into the business. And finally, a week later, my daughter was born. She was induced. I finally did get back to Cincinnati, and her name's Jamie. <laughs> and 18 years later... Uh, Bet was in a concert, and I said, Jamie, why don't you contact her agent and introduce yourself as the almost Bet child? And she never followed up, which disappointed me because Jamie's kind of a real go getter. But someday we'll have a chance to talk to Bet and laugh about it. She wouldn't remember me from Adam, but she definitely would remember that night in our wager. I'm sure, absolutely. And uh, I'm guessing if you had a, if I'm just guessing, I'm just throwing this out there, but maybe if you had a named her Bet, maybe she would have uh, responded. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, never know. Right. <laughs> never know. All right. That's that's a pretty amazing story. I like that. I think it's pretty neat when we have run-ins like that with uh, people that we sometimes consider as, you know, just out of the world people just because we see who they are on screen and don't ever get a chance to see who they really are in person. Uh, and I was, I was glad that that ended up working out like that. So you have obviously done quite a few things, and you very you gave a very brief synopsis of what you've done thus far in your life. And I know this because I've been you know following you and paying attention to what you're doing. I've listened to some other audios and videos that you have been a part of or been in, and you've got one heck of a story. One thing I have not caught thus far is that kick in the gut moment that true kick in the gut moment that one that really takes you to your knees and i don't like to highlight this moment but i just want to point out that anybody who is a forward move that is moving forward doing what they can to improve their life like we say in the army constantly improving your foxhole you're going to have kick in the guts you're going to have bumps in the roads i'd love for you to share one of those kick in the gut moments with us well, having a six-figure income, running a $400 million division product development, and then face age discrimination in the year 2001, and what transpired from there was a pretty good kick of the gut. I mean, uh, I was not kidding about being the best-known unemployed guy in Chicago, because whenever I race, whenever I face a real obstacle, I do two things. I say, who do I know who? And I do... I am blessed with some great contacts where God talks to me through these people. And the other is I'm a real out-of-the-box kind of guy. So I figure, you know, how can I recreate something? But I did that for a number of years, and I did everything. I mean, I sold tile. I was a, a cashier. I pushed carts in a Walmart. I drove a school bus. Us, but I never gave up. You know, when I was selling tile, I was working 48 hours a week, um, mainly nights and weekends, so I could do the job search. And that went on for years. I sold countertops. I went from an industry I never knew. I built up where I was highly respected with every builder in Chicago. And then, you know, like two of my top builders were building 300 homes a year, went down to three between them, and the whole crash of the housing market. So, had some challenges, and uh, boy, did I. Did I improve my uh, religious and spiritual beliefs and my belief in, in mankind and my belief that you, if you want to see a change in the future, you got to make it yourself and do it by caring for others. So there's been a lot of lessons learned for sure. Yeah, and the point that I want to get out of that is has been made several times. Man, pay attention to what he's saying and read between the lines because... When you're kicked down and you're you're in that situation, in this case, age discrimination uh, and basically being told you're not who we want anymore because of your age or anything else for that matter, fill in your, your story. But the bottom line is this. He lost his job. He lost his way of income. He had to completely pivot and pay attention to the fact that he did things that most men would not do. I mean, pushing carts in Walmart... You know, getting into an industry he had no information about, had never done before, that is huge. And that's what it takes 
to do what you have to do to take care of your family to in 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 the process you're making multiple connections you're showing people that you're willing to do what it takes and more importantly in my mind personally you're showing your wife you're showing your family that you're willing to do what it takes to make it happen and to make it work and i i just give you uh, I truly commend that in you, Jim, and I commend anybody who is willing to do that. Because, and I say that because I talk to guys quite often who is, I, I make a suggestion to them, and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to go clean houses. Are you crazy? I'm not going to do that. I'm like, well, dude, I, I, this is right here. This is low-hanging fruit, man. You need money. I thought you said you need money. You, you need a job, you know? So I don't know. It's, some guys just don't get it. Yeah, I agree. You know, um, when I was young, I was privileged. I worked hard, but I mean, I was given some breaks that at some very important times. So I changed from a very young guy with a lot of confidence and cockiness to somebody who, you know, learned life's lessons. And, uh, you know, the, the two G's that drive my life are God and gratitude. And the thing that really helped along the way was the big word V, you know, volunteer. Oh, I can't tell you how how important volunteer has been to me and how many opportunities have come my way because of that. Well said. Very well said. There's a lot said right there, too. I love that. So what was that enough is enough moment? What was your pivot point that kind of got you back on the right path or did it ever? Oh, yeah. Um, Well, I told you that I had uh, been the best known unemployed guy. So the, the version, the short version is I volunteered with the largest job support group in in Chicago called the Barrington Career Center and I always figured there's a you know you can do a better way so there was a young guy with uh, he was an IT manager from Sears and he and I put together some skills and we decided to have a, a database sign-in program for the Barrington Career Center and then create Yahoo groups to tie people together in electronic communities so we did that for a number of years and even when I went on and got jobs I considered this my life to pay it back and give back and every year the board invited Marilyn and I as guests along with the board of directors for their Christmas party quite an honor so after about eight years of doing this they got a new executive director and you know you've heard the expression of no good deed goes unpunished or the not invented here syndrome that so many leaders fall prey to so anyway they had a new executive director and she wanted to shut everything down without even understanding it so one of the board members counseled me and said Jim you've got a huge communication problem we got 4200 clients that are constantly turning over you got eight total volunteer organizations that you've trained and managed and now you got a new executive director who says you know who's using this BCC logo that she doesn't even know. So I went home and I said, wow, that is the hugest communication problem I've ever had. How do I solve it? And I decided to become a video producer because video was the only way that I could do it. Now, this is a guy who never held a camcorder in his hand. So bottom line, six weeks and $2,000 of my own money, I created a DVD copy for every board member, went in to meet with the executive director, and she says, we want you to take it down. So without even opening the cover of the book, she decided it was not a story she wanted to read. So I walked out of that meeting. I could have huge animosity, but I said, thank you, God. I've got a new skill. So I fast-forwarded that and um, had the privilege to volunteer in our church. And bottom line, I was running a weekly TV show with a half a million dollar control room, a crew of eight, moving from projector operator to uh, robotic control camera operator to actually technical director and finally director so we produced a catholic mass and sent it out over the airwaves and all the comcast public broadcasting stations and burned it to dvd and brought it to hospitals and nursing homes where i volunteered to deliver communion all of that because i had a communication challenge if that's not god working in my life i don't know what is so that's the plan that i did i became a video producer i am a video producer and i found all these challenges of how to bootstrap with every Everybody telling you you're doing it wrong yeah it, so is that what kind of launched you into doing what you're doing now with the QR codes how did you get into that right I'll give it the short version because she was so tactful but the head of the uh, Chamber of Commerce in McHenry Illinois said in her tactful way and I'll rephrase it in my blunt way you know Jim watch my lips no one is gonna hire you <laughs> 
And it was probably the kindest thing she said to me. It was on October 18th of 2010. So I went home and I said, oh, my God, she's probably right. You know, I've been chasing down this job thing and it's just not happening. So what can I do? And I did some real hard looking in the mirror and I said, where are my skills? And I said, communication. What are the trends? The Internet, social media, video. How do I put all those together? And I laid out a vision map on that day that I've been chasing ever since. And along the way, I saw this technology from Toyota, and they only license a handful of companies, and I happened to be blessed to have a relationship with one of those companies. And uh, I, I developed this concept of bringing the offline world to your online presence using these call to action symbols, which is my trademark name, as the entrance ramp to the information highway. And I did all that so that I could sell video because when you say video, people immediately think a talking head and you go down this long path of negativism because just the lack of knowledge. And so trying to sell video straight up was not working and this was my way of putting it all together. And then I got invited, um, I say to people, Wally, it would be like you being invited to teach the Mormon Tabernacle Choir how to sing. That'd be a challenge, wouldn't it? Indeed. (laughs) For me, too, because I sing terribly. But I got an invitation to be the guest speaker at the Google Development Group Chicago Android Meetup. Yeah, the guys that invented the whole cellular communication industry that developed Motorola and on and on and on. And I went in there and put together a one-hour PowerPoint to teach them they were doing it wrong. But from there, I got invited by some wonderful people like yourself and Lady Audio and Andy Nathan and a lot of people on the internet who brought me as a guest speaker. And that gave a little bit of credibility. But more importantly is this platform that I was using and you know I laughed because the phone call I got one day is Jim this is David Harper I don't want you selling my software and I said well first of all good morning who is this <laughs> he said it is David Harper I am the founder and CEO of deliver.com and I don't want you selling my software and he said I'll give you one thing you know he said I don't talk to people you know I got people in my organization to talk to people but I wanted to talk to you because you've been absolutely honest and totally transparent I just can't figure out what you're doing and after a two hour conversation he said let me lay the resources in my company at your feet and by the way who's that partner of yours in New York I want to do it for her too so we built a relationship that is absolutely arm's length we talked about affiliate but I said no I want to be the best salesperson you never paid all I want is unfettered access to your platform because his biggest account is Macy's and number two is Kohl's And I had some ideas on how to pull this all together to deliver on my mission, which is expanded from taking or bringing the offline world to your online presence. And the new tagline is creating two-way interactive communication by adding hashtag push the number sign to or the numeral to push to go capability to all your printed materials and that's really exploded lately when you can take a piece of printed literature and the push to go came because I press on the www on somebody's printed literature and say oh I can't get the hot link to work must be something wrong with this and they look at me like I got three heads and I said how would you like that to be able to do that right to bring people from this literature to an interactive digital experience well I can do that for you And people are finally, 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 after five years of failure, trying to get that, and it's really starting to take off. Yeah, I used to use those, uh, the QR codes, uh, quite a bit, and I still see them around. I still see them, you know, they're more and more popular. They're getting out on the products and stuff. I just picked up a product this morning because I was talking to my son that I was going to have a conversation with you uh, today, and he knew what QR codes were. Uh, he's 17, and you know we were looking at them on the products that we had in the house. But um, I definitely like the idea. I like the whole and the ingenuity of the fact that you can only put so much information on a printed, let's say, a product or a box or in a magazine or a newspaper or whatever. But and or and most people these days, quite frankly, in my experience anyway, and this is what I'm learning is, even on the phone people or even on the computer most people don't type in URLs 
They just don't do that. They, if they don't have a, a link to click on, chances are they're not going to go there. So if they can point their phone at a QR code and then push a button, just push their screen, and they're there, I mean, that just makes perfect sense. It's huge. Um, now, I'm going to win. See, my goal is to change the world. We'll talk on the side. I do have a real goal of impacting half the world, and that's men. We'll talk about that from a cancer and prostate cancer awareness standpoint because that's very deep and close to my heart. Um, but if I get you to quit using the word QR code and start substituting call, the numeral two action symbols, this would be a real win for me because I'm trying to teach the world how to speak a new language. Let's call it French. But this call to action symbol, which is my trademark, is totally different than a QR code because 98% of the people have done QR codes terribly wrong. And you mentioned the 17 year old son, he's probably got a negative impression. He says, Oh, yeah, they were fad, they don't work. You know, I hear all this negativism all day long because people did it wrong because it was open source software. But remember, I said Toyota themselves, the owner of the technology, only licensed a handful of companies, and I happen to be involved than that and we teach people how to do it right so it's night and day difference and in, and to your son who might have said oh that was a fad at one time it's actually technology that was way 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 ahead of its time you know at one time you needed Wi-Fi so it would only work when you're in a McDonald's or a Starbucks now we have a totally always connected world you know through 3G and 4G LTE cellular communications in addition the phones and the, the smartphones and tablets had to catch up you know that takes a number of Christmases and today 74.1 percent of your entire audience has the most powerful technology known to mankind in their hand and then finally, the lesson I, I learned from Jack Welch, the chairman of General Electric, that you know all my training doesn't go away. Uh, my joke is I don't fart in church without measuring audience reaction. And any good business person measures everything they do. And that's what's unique about what we do with Call to Action Symbols. We provide a free, did I say free, URL which is a whole tracking analytics site. So whenever somebody scans a call to action symbol, that engagement will all be measured. So if you want to see it in depth, I own the hashtag engage direct measure. So if you take those three words, don't have a space, put a hashtag in front of it, you'll see page after page after page of education, which is what I've been doing for five years is teaching the world. Very interesting, and I like the fact that it goes further than just taking you to the call to action. It you're you're in the background. You're tracking all of that, all of that data, which is extremely useful. You're absolutely correct. Any business person that I know, online, offline, it doesn't matter. They're tracking as much as they possibly can. Now, what they read is different because of where they're at in their business, but to have all that information at your fingertips is extremely powerful. Well, I can talk very complex. I could go nose to nose with the top IT guy in the country, right? Because I used to sell computers for so many years. I had 1,600 Unix installations with a national sales force of 100 people. So I know what I'm talking about. But my real challenge is nose to nose with that businessman that maybe doesn't have a college education. So he didn't go through marketing 101. He doesn't have an idea of about what a B split testing is or she has not been exposed to it now let me give you an idea very simply um, a B split testing means you run a campaign that that is unique um, you know in the yellow pages they used to put in a separate phone number that would work only with the people responding to that ad then they'd run a newspaper ad it would be exactly the same and they would put a different phone number so they could gauge which media their uh, people were coming from well it's the same thing in this digital world I just use call to action symbols to give very robust uh, results but the bottom line is all return on investment you know and I don't talk to consumers I just talk to business people um, and if you want to determine how to get the best return on investment in your business, you better measure campaign A and measure campaign B. And if B is doing better than A, you know what you do? You quit doing A and you shift all your money over to B and you do more of that mm -hmm. or vice versa. So 
it, it gives you documented numbers so that you can make the informed and intelligent decision how to make more money. You stop doing those things that don't work and you do more of those things that do. It's pretty simple. But people have got to read, learn, listen, follow links, watch videos. You know, you don't get your master's degree in three days. That just doesn't work in America. And that's what everybody wants. They want the results without working and they just will not read, as you pointed out earlier. It's a shame. We have about 85% functionally illiterate in America today. And it's so frustrating. Very good point. I'm glad you brought that up. I was just listening to a podcast this morning, uh, the um, Success 101 podcast with a good friend of mine, and they they were bringing that up. And one of the quotes that they said I absolutely love is said, "Not all readers are successful, but all successful people are readers." And they also gave a statistic that readers, uh, quite frankly, they're they when they live longer and they they have more um, brain capacity. They they all their faculties are about them. And a perfect example of that is my wife's grandfather, who is a hundred and two, and reads every single day to this day, every single day. And he not just reads just to read, but reads to learn and to um, build his brain. No question. You know, uh, I don't brag about myself today. I think any success has been God's working in my life, and I sure have made enough mistakes that uh, I, I learned some modesty. But if I do want to brag about somebody, it would be my daughter, who is a physical therapist, got a full ride scholarship to Northeastern, went to school for 18 years, and got one B. She's now a sponsored triathlete in Colorado, 38 years old with two kids. She's turned in the best times of her life. So, yeah, that's somebody I'm proud of. But it all started with my wife reading to her when she was a little baby and, you know, read book after book after book. And, and that's what changed her life. And, of course, now her daughter at eight years old has been reading for years. And the five-year-old is now reading. So... If you want to improve your life, learn how to read, learn how to speed read, and learn how to work on comprehension. So many people read and they just don't get it. It just really is a shame. Yeah, I agree. I agree 100%. Well, Jim, we're at the point where we are going to pay it forward to our abundant leaders. You ready to do that? Yes, sir. All right. So give men of abundance one to three actionable steps that they can take today. Number one, if you're over four years old, get a blood test. Get a PSA, prostate-specific antigen test. It can save your life. It saved the voice of Major League Baseball, Ed Randall, who runs a charity called FansForTheCure.org. He is the obnoxious Howard Stern's roommate. He is my mentor when I was cured seven years ago. So we are out there to change the world to have men aware that it's a 97 percent cure rate um, on prostate cancer if you just catch it early and get a blood test because one in six men will have prostate cancer when they die so that's number one number two is just because of your generosity anybody listening to this podcast i will give them a call to action symbol that i sell on my website for 47 dollars absolutely free altruistic free no charge pro bono because we really want to spread this technology and help people to better communicate not only for business but for charities and for religious things and you know my eight-year-old is raising money right now for american heart foundation i mean let's try to pay it forward by doing things right in this life and to do it it would be better if we all improve our communication skills. And I can't think of any other way to improve your communication skills than to utilize call to action symbols to bring the offline world to your online presence. Excellent. Yeah, I truly appreciate that. And I will have the link to all of that and every, every other link that we talk about in the show notes at menofabundance.com. So you just have to go there and, and click on that and get directly there to get that call to action symbol wonderful so what daily habits make up the biggest impact in your life Jim every morning I get up I say a prayer of gratitude and you know of humbleness and then chasing your passion you know if you've got it figured out and I think you know what mine is today 
then the Lord put you here for that reason, to chase the passion. And as you're doing it, people around you can feel the excitement. They can benefit from it. They want to be with you. They want to learn. And if we can all go into our graves knowing that we did the best job possible to help mankind with our unique skills, what more can you look for in a day? Not what political party you're part of, not what position you've risen to, not how much money you have in your bank account, but what kind of positive impact did you make on the world? Excellent. I love that. What are you reading or listening to that you'd recommend to our abundant leaders and why? Well, the number one book that changed my life has been Made to Stick. And I wish I had so much business that I can turn down every account that wants me to produce a video unless they follow the made to stick format it truly is and i've read lots in my 40 years in a professional career but it really is the number one way to teach people how to communicate effectively and my mentor the guy that i bought the video training program from if i can do a shout out miguel hernandez from grumo media put his whole course together based on the success formula spelled out in that book and he's so anal he actually measures every line in his script against that formula if it doesn't pass he throws it away and makes a better script so made to stick it's by two brothers who happen to be from michigan that's a shame i'm a buckeye but it's a <laughs> phenomenal book made to stick perfect we'll have that linked up in the show notes as well so i got one last question for you jim and that is what does living a life of abundance mean to you well i've been blessed with it you know we sold sold our house in illinois my wife did in a garage sale so I was going to be homeless next thing you know I'm living in the desert with the Santan Mountains coming right down to the top of my hill and I'm deeply involved in motorcycle groups and FMCA and charity and all that so I am living the life of abundance and I don't complain about anything and I laugh at people who do because if you're a cancer survivor there's nothing more they can throw at you so just enjoy the life Give back what you can. Try to do what you can to make somebody's life a little bit better and tell every man to take a PSA test. Very good points. And one thing I want to point out, too, is even though you're not a cancer survivor or you don't have something horrendous that has happened in your life, a lot of people say that you have to have a significant emotional event to change the direction of your life and to change your mindset. And I'm here to tell you that's absolutely not true because I've seen people who have had significant emotional events and have not changed their lives. And I've seen those who have not and have changed their lives and their mindset. The way you can do that, one of many ways you can do that, is to continue listening to this podcast, Men of Abundance. Listen to other men. Get into men's groups. Get into groups. Get into your faith. Get into your community. And learn from those and hang around those. Learn from those actions of men who are, in fact, living a life of abundance like Jim. So, Jim, we're going to close this up, and before we do, please leave us with a parting piece of guidance and any other way that we can get in contact with you. We'll link that up in the show notes, and then we'll say goodbye. Okay. Reach out to me. My company name is my website. It is Budget Video, the number four, dot B-I-Z, as in Bravo Ivory Zebra. Budget Video 4 dot biz. And it shows off my movies, MOVS, trademark, which is a mobile optimized video site. And I always respond. Never auto responders. I pick up the phone or I answer the email. We are all about communication. Anybody who has a question or needs help, I am available. Perfect. And a parting piece of guidance? Parting piece of guidance. I think we covered them all pretty much. If you take the me, me, me out of your life and you live every day with one of humility and gratitude, I guarantee you that life is going to be a whole lot more fun for you and everyone around you. Agreed, 100%. Jim, thanks for your time. It's been great. I truly have, uh, enjoyed this conversation. I look forward to talking with you more as well on the call to action symbol and see what we can do with it.
what a wonderful opportunity. Thank you, Wally. I am I am so humbled by this opportunity. Anything I can do to help you in your mission uh, to further your passion, I'm all about doing that. I appreciate it. Aloha. Aloha. Guys, one thing that I get from that conversation is never, ever give up. I mean, look at Jim. Let's look at his age, and let's be honest about this. He could have given up. He could have completely quit and just given into the system and said, I'm old. They're not going to hire me. Nobody's going to hire me. He completely changed his paradigm. He changed who he was. He didn't let his vocation, he didn't let his what he did for a living in the past define him. He redefined himself, and he's redefining an entire industry. That is super amazing. I would love to hear what you got out of it. So this episode is going to be posted over at the Men of Abundance Facebook group, the Men of Abundance Community Facebook group. Again, you can go to menofabundance.com, click on members only, and you will be able to get access to that group if you don't already have access. Post underneath this episode what your thoughts are. Let's have a conversation about that. Seriously, we cannot grow as men in a bubble. We have to open up and we have to have these conversations and talk with each other. So go get in the community. Let's have the conversation. Now go out and live your life of abundance and make sure to pay it forward. That's all for today, Abundance Leaders. For more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today, be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com. We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance. 